Hello and welcome back, G-Man in the Studio Lab. Today I have a misbehaving sequential drum tracks. I bought it from another synth tech who was thinning the herd. I do love a good challenge. Now let's turn it on and see what's happening. Cut the light off so you can see. It's certainly not behaving right. Occasionally the system shuts off for a moment and comes back. Tapping around on the chips can sometimes expose a problem source, but not today. To check the power supply in isolation, I'll remove the connectors. Plus 15 volts. Minus 15 volts. And plus 5 volts. All checks out fine there. Uh, nonetheless, looking around, I can see tantalum capacitors. I'll go ahead and replace those, plus the electrolytic capacitors in the power supply. They're going on 40 years old, why not? And all the tantalums on the CPU voice board might be a good idea too. Be sure to unplug the drum machine from power before working on the power supply. A little trick I've learned is to add some fresh solder and pull the component out as you're trying to remove it. Then go back and wick up the solder. Clean up the area with some denatured alcohol. Here's the new tantalums in the power supply. I also replaced a small signal diode there as well. It wasn't damaged or anything, but it's exposed to some heat in that area, so I thought it was a good idea. Now, with the drum machine still unplugged, I'll check for shorts between the voltage rails and ground, just for good measure. Oof, the 5 volts line is below 100 ohms. Sometimes you see that, and it can be normal, believe it or not, as long as it's not happening when the power supply is in isolation. I'll remove the connectors again and check. 7K, but thereabouts on the 5 volt rail, that's good. So I went ahead and pulled the battery even though it was measuring above 3 volts. Turning it over, I can see it was made in Japan. And that's because maybe it has a 1984 date code. I'd say it was time to go ahead and replace it. So the issues still persist. At least some things have been ruled out. I want to check the signals at the Z80 CPU and see what's going on there. After probing some pins, it seems there is some contention on the data bus. Contention is where multiple devices are putting data on the bus at the same time. The signals should not have steps in them. They should either be zero volts low or five volts high. Not four volt stepping weird stuff going on. I can freeze the scope so you can see this. It's definitely not right. A pair of chips are responsible for strobing data devices for when it's their turn to put data on the bus. One is a decoder chip and the other is a quad or gate logic chip. Looking at the decoder chip on the scope I find that three of the four lines are always high. Uh, strobe R4 is high strobe R3 is high, strobe R2 is high, and also has a weird little stepping signal going on as well. Strobe R1 looks a little better. I'll go ahead and replace the decoder chip. It's an LS, uh, 74LS138 and see what happens. This one is the chip that I replaced, and while that didn't fix my problem, the signals are going into that quad OR gate I was telling you about earlier. Maybe that logic chip is pulling these three strobe signals high. I'll replace that chip and see if that gives me the results I'm looking for. With that now done, it didn't seem to help anything. Sometimes it helps to pull out the RAM chips out of their sockets and clean the legs. I also cleaned the IC4 legs, just for fun. I like to use a Dremel tool set on low speed with a wire brush to gently polish the legs and put the RAM chips and IC4 back the way they were. Still nothing is helping. One thing to know about these old drum machines though, they can get confused if RAM chips ever get swapped to different sockets. So as a last ditch effort, maybe swapping RAM chips around might help? I don't know. Let's give it a shot. First I swapped the locations of RAM IC 7 and 8 and turn this puppy on, and now it's suddenly working? Control commands are now recognized. Operation is stable. So what's up with that? 
I'm not an expert on digital stuff by any means. My best guess, there is data the machine expected to be at certain addresses, but when the chips get swapped around, that changes the addresses, right? If you know exactly what's going on, be sure to leave a comment below. I'm going to put this thing back together. So, all of this means there was really nothing wrong with the machine itself, apart from some buttons needing cleaning and replacing. I still need to replace the bezels and button caps on two of these switches, and I'm glad I replaced the battery and tantalum capacitors for sure. It's a happy camper, how about that? It's crazy, right? Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.